Well, good evening and welcome to a special edition of Tracking the Tropics. I'm CBS 17 Storm Team Meteorologist Brian Hutton Jr. in Raleigh, North Carolina, and we've got two systems heading right for the Gulf Coast, Hurricane Marco and Tropical Storm Laura. Tonight, you'll hear from meteorologists in Lafayette, Louisiana and in Mobile, Alabama, as the tropical systems prepare to make U.S. landfall this week. But before we talk to those guys, let's get into the specifics surrounding both of these storms. What has changed throughout the day is an upgrade to hurricane warning for us, and this is along the Louisiana and Mississippi coastline, stretching from the Mississippi and Alabama border all the way to about Homa, Louisiana. We then have tropical storm warnings in effect from Homa back out towards Lake Charles and also for all of the Alabama coastline. And stretches also into the Florida panhandle as well. There are inland tropical storm and hurricane watches in effect as well, as well as some flash flood watches up as Marco will be making a close call and impacting these areas starting as soon as tomorrow. And then, of course, just a couple of days later, we'll then be talking about Laura making landfall as well. It's 8 o'clock, so there was a new intermediate advisory in for both Marco and Laura. Now, at the intermediate advisories, which are issued every six hours offset of the main advisory, the only thing the National Hurricane Center updates uh, is the wind speed and position. There is no track changes at the intermediate advisories. We'll see new track changes tonight at 11 o'clock Eastern Time, 10 o'clock Central. So the track hasn't changed from earlier this evening. The only updates are where the storm is located. If you're Tracking at home, it's at 26.4 north, 87.6 west, with wind speed still at 75 miles per hour, with gusts to 90, and pressure has been holding at about 991 millibars. An update's about 180 miles south-southeast at the mouth of the Mississippi River, which is about this point right here. You can see that some rain is already impacting portions of the Florida Panhandle. There have been some on again, off again showers in the portions of Mobile and Baldwin counties in Alabama, and that also stretches over some of the parishes in Louisiana as well, as the core of the storm is still well offshore, but those outer bands are already starting to cause some impacts along the Gulf Coast, and that will continue and, of course, deteriorate as we head through the rest of the night. Now here's Marco's forecast track, and again, this is the same track from 5 o'clock. There are no track changes, only the position update. And uh, we see here that the position is a little different, a little bit more to the east from where the National Hurricane Center had expected. That's why you see this kind of funny shape here with the cone. So I would not be surprised when we get our new track update at 11. If this shifts a little further to the north, it may re-include New Orleans when we get an update at 11. It is forecast, though, the likely come on shore tomorrow afternoon, still as a Category 1 hurricane, and then either be just onshore in South Louisiana or just offshore into the Gulf of Mexico as we head through Tuesday and Wednesday before it heads into Texas and then finally dissipates. Perhaps the good news with Marco is that it is forecast to dissipate pretty rapidly, so it shouldn't cause a lot of long term problems, but it's only we also have a storm that will be coming right behind it, so it's still not good news for us. That other storm is Tropical Storm Laura. It is still a tropical storm. Latest update again, just a position and speed update. Winds are still 60 miles per hour. It's now 30 miles west of Guantanamo, Cuba. The actual center has now come on shore, according to the National Hurricane Center in Cuba, and it was forecast to basically kind of hug the southern portion of Cuba. Now, this may actually be good news as this heads into the Gulf, as with the center on shore, this could potentially disrupt its circulation, which means it's a weaker storm when it hits the Gulf of Mexico, and that means it's going to take long to get together, so it should be a weaker storm at U.S. landfall. Although with everything that's happened so far with both Marco and Laura, they've kind of done what they've wanted to do. In a lot of ways, they've defied the forecast, so we'll have to continue to watch this closely. Here's a forecast track again. This is from 5 o'clock. You can see the center pretty close to what the Hurricane Center had actually expected. It is forecast, as I mentioned, kind of hug the southern portion of Cuba and then move into the Gulf of Mexico, where it is forecast to intensify. The one negative thing with Laura is that once it gets into the Gulf of Mexico, the environment will be extremely favorable for development and potentially rapid intensification of the system as it moves through the Gulf of Mexico before making landfall likely somewhere in Louisiana. Although this has shifted further west through the day today, although some recent model runs have actually tried to shift the center back east though, so we'll see how this kind of holds up when the new update comes out at 11. But it is forecast to make landfall as a Category 2 hurricane, and the National Hurricane Center notes that this could potentially become a major hurricane, meaning a Category 3 storm by landfall. So that is definitely something to watch as we head into Wednesday. So late Wednesday into very early Thursday it should come on shore, likely in Louisiana or Texas at this point, and then quickly lift off to the north and east. So Laura, unlike Marco, could actually have some wider ranging impacts because not only will it cause problems where it comes on shore, but some of that moisture will be sent north
southward towards the Ohio River Valley, and that could mean some decent rainfall for places like Louisville, Kentucky, here in Raleigh, North Carolina, and up into the northeast as well. So Laura is going to be the one that impacts more people. Hopefully, though, we'll see a weakening trend as it moves across Cuba. But again, that's something we're going to have to keep our eyes on closely. As you've probably heard about the last several days, uh, this, these two tracks are going to come very, um, really over top of each other as we head over the next about three days or so. That Marco has impacts on Monday and Tuesday, and then Laura has impacts on Wednesday and Thursday. So these are the, their two forecast tracks overlaid. Laura's track is in red, Marco's track is in yellow, and you can see that some spots may be impacted by the same storm, by, this, by twice uh, from two different storms. Lafayette, Louisiana included, Beaumont, Texas, Houston potentially could be impacted as well. So really kind of the uh, west central portion of the Gulf Coast here uh, could see some major impacts, not just from Marco, but also uh, from Laura. So that's something that we will continue to watch as we head through the next couple of days. So let's kind of walk this through. Here's a uh, and in one forecast model here. This is the GFS model showing where Marco is now and actually doing a pretty good job of showing where Marco is. It's forecast again to come near the coastline or just on shore as we head through Monday. You can see this is the National Hurricane Center track. Here's the forecast model. So again, we may see a bit of a shift to the north and to the east when the new update comes out at 11 and then this moves off to the west and dissipates right behind it though is Hurricane Laura, which will likely be stronger. And when it comes on shore in Louisiana, this uh, forecast model has it coming on shore likely Thursday morning. Again, like as a category two, maybe a category three storm. And then it lifts northward. And notice all of this moisture continues lifting northward and heads out towards the northeast as well, where there could be rainfall, some potentially heavy rainfall embedded here as we head to Friday, Saturday, and Sunday across the Ohio River Valley into the northeast and even portions of the mid Atlantic, including all the way down towards here in Raleigh. So Laura again is definitely going to be the one that's more of a wide ranging impact. Doesn't mean this is going to be flooding rain, but that moisture is going to be sent off to the north and east. And so more people will be impacted by Laura as opposed to what's going to happen with Marco, both though having different problems we'll have to deal with. One of the reasons we are concerned, especially with Laura as it comes into the Gulf of Mexico is because it's so warm there. You need warm sea surface temperatures, warm ocean water to get really strong systems to develop where Laura is now a Really, uh, temperatures are sitting between about 85 and 88 degrees towards Cuba. Of course, right now the center is on shore. But as it heads into the Gulf of Mexico, check out these water temperatures. These are all from different buoys out into the Gulf of Mexico. Temperatures easily 85, 86, 87, 88 degrees in the portions of the Gulf. That's extremely warm, soupy water. And hurricanes like that, that lets them get stronger. We're going to have weak wind shear. So things are lining up for Laura to potentially develop pretty quickly once it gets into the Gulf. But again, how it looks when it gets there will what determinates kind of upper ceiling as to how strong it can get. Normally, when we have a system in the Gulf of Mexico, like we do with Marco now, we get something that's called upwelling. That's as the system moves over open water, as it sucks in kind of all that warm water, what it does is it causes some cooler water from under, from down below in the ocean to come back up to the surface, and that cools the top layer of the surface of the water. That's called upwelling. Unfortunately, Marco's moving fast, and it's a pretty weak storm, so it's not going to cause a lot of upwelling in here, and Laura will take a slightly different trajectory as well, so Marco is not really going to disrupt the environment environment for Laura. So Laura is going to do what it can do, despite the fact that a system is passing through the Gulf of Mexico right now. So that's why we do have some major concerns for Laura and also for Marco. That's an overview of these systems, but what will the local impacts be across portions of the southeast? Well, for that, I'd like to bring in our first guest tonight, uh, who is someone that will likely see some of the direct impacts from Marco starting tomorrow. KLFY meteorologist Trevor Sonier is with us from Lafayette, Louisiana. Now, Trevor, with landfall likely less than about 24 hours away now, how are people in Acadiana feeling tonight? Well, it looks like most of the effects will be across southeastern Louisiana with Marco. Uh, hurricane warning is in effect there. They're the ones most likely to get hurricane force winds. Some tropical storm force winds could try to move westward, it looks like, as we head through tomorrow night and through Tuesday. But luckily, some dry air is going to wrap into the circulation, and that may lessen the flood threat. But we are still on guard here because anytime you have a slow-moving tropical system moving just west or just south of your location working west, you always have to worry about that flood threat. So that's something that we're definitely on guard for. But really not expecting much of a wind threat here across Acadiana, but maybe more so over southeastern parts of the state. 
Right, that's, that's a good point. I, I know that, you know, especially with system to your south and how Marco has been exhibiting itself, north and east has been the main impact with rain, at least. Hopefully wind is lighter by the time it gets there. But Acadiana, though, is also unique in that there's a lot of swamps and watery areas in that portion of Louisiana. It is the bayou, after all. Uh, so are you guys concerned with flooding concerns with both Marco and then Laura as they impact you back to back? Well, in terms of Laura, I think it may, may be a little too early to know uh, all the specifics. But in terms of Marco, uh, a storm surge is definitely forecast for much of the Louisiana coast. Two to four feet of storm surge coming in. And then high tide, you can increase those numbers a bit. Three to five feet likely across southeastern portions of the state when you have that long southeasterly fetch. It really brings in that water and water piles up near the coast. And sometimes when you have a very high storm surge, it can move up the Atchafalaya. That's that big basin, that big bayou that's on the southeastern part of the state. So we'll definitely be watching for storm surge. Uh, it, the inland flooding threat, I believe, for Acadiana will be low just because I'm not expecting widespread storm activity and concentrated storm activity. Dry air will be wrapping into the system. We've seen this a few times with Hurricane Barry, for example, a few years ago, dry air wrapped into the center of circulation. And we really didn't get much at all in terms of widespread rain. We had one rain band that set up over the area and dumped anywhere from uh, 10 to 12 inches. But Looking at a widespread larger area, we really didn't see a lot of rainfall with that once that dry air really became entrenched in the system. I think we could see something similar with Marco. Now, Laura, this will be a full-fledged, healthy, most likely major hurricane, so that's a totally different story. Yeah, I remember very well. I was moving in the middle of Barry and sat with some of that heavy rain where I was in Mississippi. So I remember a lot about Barry and a lot of its rain that it did cause. And now you, you mentioned with Loris, and as we talked about, it could potentially be a Category 3 storm at landfall. Uh, so are emergency management officials worried about the forecasted stronger winds with Laura falling on top of perhaps potentially at least some wet soil, if not saturated soil, bringing some trees down when Laura comes on shore? Well, that definitely is a possibility. Anytime you have very wet soil, those large water oak trees uh, can easily fall. And uh, a lot of the times when you have wind related deaths, it comes from falling trees on houses and, and people in mobile homes. So that's something that uh, I'm sure government officials are definitely stressing. That's why we have evacuation orders, uh, especially near the coast. But if you are in mobile homes, if you are surrounded by a lot of large oak trees uh, around your home, it's definitely a good idea to maybe evacuate and go to a, a safe more sturdy structure. So that's definitely something that we're stressing, especially when you're talking about category two or category three winds, all bets are off in terms of any trees, any large trees that can fall and debris that can be blown around in that type of uh, major hurricane environment. Yeah, I know a lot of people, especially on the Gulf Coast, not necessarily over in Acadiana, but remember Katrina. Well, Katrina, Wilma, Rita brought down a lot of trees just a little over about a decade and a half ago. So that is definitely a problem down into portions of the southeast, especially with a lot of pine trees down in that part of the woods. And now you did mention that, you know, especially as with Laura looking kind of forward a little bit with the stronger winds and some evacuation orders that may come into play. Uh, what are... What has been the sense, at least that you guys maybe have gathered with people in possible evacuations coming in the midst of our COVID pandemic? What are emergency officials and the governor kind of stressing the people as we still fight the pandemic and now the potential of two systems back to back? Well, our governor has uh, done a press conference today. And one thing he was stressing uh, is that even if you are in your home, you need to uh, do the social distancing measures. You need to wear a mask because sometimes you have people with you during hurricanes that do not normally stay with you. So even in your home, you do need to abide by those uh, safety regulations just so COVID-19 doesn't spread uh, during these two hurricanes. It's definitely a concern. I know a concern for, we had that concern when we were dealing with Isaias a couple of weeks ago as well. So it's definitely something prevalent on people's minds as we continue through hurricane season. Well, Trevor, thank you for joining the show tonight. I hope everything is well for you down there in the bayou and stay safe. Uh, that's Trevor Sonier in Lafayette, Louisiana. Thank you so much for that. Of course, they may be right in the thick of everything here over the next really about three days or so with Marco and then Laura. Again, there are still questions with Laura's track, but for now, they're going to at least be on the eastern side of the storm. So let's talk about kind of where we are climatologically because uh, it is obviously the peak of hurricane season. That's not a surprise, uh, but kind of how quickly we've started really ramping up so far this season. Uh, 
something to take in mind. So here's the typical tropical climatology here for hurricane season. We are sitting about here. We are definitely on the upswing as far as uh, climatology goes. The peak of hurricane season is September 10th, so we're still sitting over two weeks away from the peak of hurricane season. Uh, but obviously you look in the Atlantic, it looks like we're in the peak with two systems out there already. Uh, what's of interesting note is that so far this season, we have had five landfalling tropical systems in the United States. Marco will likely, likely make six tomorrow or Tuesday, and Laura could make seven by the end of August. That would be a record for the most landfalling systems by the end of August ever, at least recorded in the United States. So that's something there. Also, if Laura gets there in time while Marco is still a tropical system, it will be the first time since 1959 we've had two systems in the Gulf of Mexico at the same time. It's only happened three times in recorded history. Uh, according to Dr. Phil Klotzbach, Colorado State, after August 1st, which obviously we're well past that point, in a typical hurricane season, we get 84% of our tropical storms that develop, 91% of our hurricanes, and 95% of all major hurricanes on record develop after August August 1st. So the fact that we are in the peak and we're seeing some active tropics is not a surprise. This is what we should be seeing as we move further into August and September. It's just we've been busy since May, June and July uh, as we again set the record for earliest L and M named storms. Hopefully we at least get a break once these two are done. So here's where we stand currently with our 2020 hurricane names. Again, we are all the way down to M. Marco, a category one hurricane. Laura so far uh, just a tropical storm, but Laura could potentially be our first major hurricane as we head through this week. That is something we are going to have to watch very closely. Our next system, which will inevitably at this point, how our 2020 season has gone, uh, the next storm on the list will be Nana is our next name storm as we head towards N already. It's usually it takes a long time to get towards N. Hopefully it's a while once these two storms are out of here. All right, so we're going to head now from east of Lafayette, Louisiana, over to Mobile, Alabama. That's where we will find our next guest. Joining us now on Tracking the Tropics is WKRG Chief Meteorologist Ed Bloodsworth. And Ed, you've covered hurricanes and tropical storms for years, but it's rare to see something like this, these two storms that could legitimately impact similar areas in the Gulf. What are you seeing out of these two systems this evening? Well, I'll tell you what, we, we are at least in coastal Alabama, northwest Florida and Jackson County, Mississippi, which is the uh, area that we actually cover. We're feeling a bit more confident uh, today than we were yesterday. Of course, we've been noting the variability in these forecast tracks for the last few days. And now it does appear here as Marco starts to approach the coast and starts to make that northwesterly turn. The center at least on the current track will stay far enough away from us where our impacts there will certainly be impacts uh, but certainly uh, going to dodge a bullet with this or at least for our part of the Gulf Coast but as you mentioned uh, impacts for Marco for us are mainly going to be in the form of some heavy squally weather rain bands and there will also be some water rise you know storm surge potential generally along the, our part of the coast. We're thinking around one to two feet above high tides, uh, normal high tides. But as you know, in Mobile Bay, water tends to like to pile into the north part of the bay. And if we could see some spots, maybe around three, maybe four feet, and uh, that would cause some of our normal flood prone areas to go underwater. If you're familiar with this area, I-10, the bayway, which is elevated, uh, runs across Mobile Bay. We've also got Highway 90, which is the causeway, which sits right on the bay. And that typically does go underwater in spots uh, during storms like this, and it likely will again uh, for tomorrow. And in terms of rainfall, as you mentioned, these giant plumes of deep tropical moisture that have been sliding in, uh, that's going to lead to at least some areas maybe picking up around three to six inches of rain. Uh, best chances in our in coastal Mississippi, but then especially again to Mobile Baldwin counties in Alabama also could see uh, some pretty good rain amounts over the next couple of days as well. So you mentioned that, right? You guys definitely breathing easier tonight as you're hopefully here potentially dodging both bullets. You were under the gun though earlier this week. So kind of talk to us about how people reacted at first whenever you guys were in the cone and near the cone and now how people are feeling tonight with looking like you guys may miss the worst of both of these systems. Well, you know, our part of the Gulf Coast, you know, this is just a way of life with tropical weather in this time of year. And we've got a very wet, thankfully, a very weather savvy public generally. I think you have to be uh, to live around these parts during uh, the summer months. And so generally, when we started, to, we were able to give folks an early heads up, say, hey, you know what? We're likely at least going to have two systems moving into the Gulf. And of course, around here, you say there's something coming into the Gulf. Everyone pays attention and everyone's been taking these uh, seriously. We've been getting a lot of feedback from all of our viewers asking, 
asking, you know, all throughout the, every single hour, every time a new update comes in, you know, is this time? What do you think? Is this the kind of storm where I need to be boarding up? Should I start, you know, to plan to evacuate? And, you know, a couple of days ago when this forecast was looking a little bit more ominous for us, you know, at that point we were telling folks, you, know, you need to go, and go ahead and review your hurricane plans. Uh, but now some folks, you know, folks, you know, tend to do the right thing when it comes to evacuation orders. I don't foresee that in our part of the region from Marco or from Laura. We may just get some outer effects in terms of some high seas and uh, rip current risk, especially for the end of next week. But I think folks have been really taking this year seriously, considering how busy it's been. Yeah, that is the one thing about people in Mississippi and Alabama. Anytime you mention golf and tropics, their ears perk up and they pay attention. And that brings back memories from working in Mississippi for several years. And uh, I imagine uh, now for where I was, at least in Mississippi, people anytime you mention golf would always ask, is this going to be like Katrina? Do you guys get similar feedback when you're talking about storms? You know, is there a storm they name? Is this going to be like X uh, whenever you guys are talking about tropical systems? Well, I th around here, it's really generational. You ask some, you know, folks who are, who are around, you know, are born after, you know, after this, you know, who were born in the late 70s and uh, early, and then in the 80s, they, you know, Katrina has been the benchmark. But then you ask a lot of folks who have been around this area for 40, 50 years, they hearken back to Hurricane Frederick uh, when that storm moved uh, through uh, Mobile Bay and caused havoc as a, a very, as a major hurricane. So that's kind of the benchmark storm uh, that a lot of people use, either Frederick or Katrina. But I'm, I'm glad you kind of mentioned that in the Gulf of Mexico because what we always talk about with these storms, you know, I, I once a wise meteorologist I work with says you always have to be careful about anything getting into the Gulf. You know, you mentioned the warm water temperatures, but as you mentioned, when Laura starts to make its approach there into the Gulf, you got that big high overhead with the uh, Laura moving in at the surface, warm waters. I mean, all the ingredients are there to possibly see some kind of rapid intensification. And you know what? This is kind of the setup that we saw when, you know, when we had storms like Rita and uh, Katrina and Rita and Charlie, when they made their approach into the Gulf of Mexico, they all went through these rapid intensification cycles. So with this kind of pattern as you mentioned Brian the chance is certainly there yes yeah, definitely at least worth paying attention to right because it could happen and these storms have kind of done their own thing so far and hopefully that's not the case but definitely something to at least kind of keep at the you know the edge of our peripheral vision there uh, you guys mentioned you know you obviously you're a coastal market you do have a lot of beaches uh, you have a lot of vacationers obviously COVID probably has impacted that just a bit uh, but how do you guys convey the impacts of things like the increased rip current risk in the higher surf. Do you find that people generally listen to kind of heed to that or do they just head to the beach, see the waves and try and get some good surfing in? Well, we do see a lot of folks who always want to go out. We saw that with Cristobal when that made a landfall on the Gulf Coast earlier this year. You know, we had a lot of folks out there. Uh, you know, Cristobal, not necessarily the strongest storm, but it certainly had a pretty big impact in our area. We had a significant coastal flooding uh, just from higher tides. They were running anywhere from four feet, in some cases five feet above normal in some locations. But generally, you know, living along the Gulf Coast when we have st uh, storms like this approaching, folks are going to go out there and they're going to get their cameras. They're going to take and, and just ooh and ah at the surf. And you will see a couple of surfers trying to take advantage. But thankfully, lifeguard crews are, uh, are, are very well trained around here. And uh, usually when those red flags or in this case, likely double red flags go up tomorrow, you know, people tend to take it seriously and they will stay out of the water for the most part, especially when they start seeing those double red flags, which we'll probably have over northwest Florida, coastal Alabama, Alabama, coastal Mississippi. Those red flags will probably start going up tonight, and they're probably going to stick around all the way through Tuesday. Yeah, we saw red flags with uh, Isaias as it came on shore along our southern outer banks, and people generally were out of the water. So that's good to know the people are at least <laughs> not just here in North Carolina, but down there too, taking that very seriously. Uh, Ed, thank you so much. I know you've been very busy. Thank you for taking time out of your day to speak with us. <laughs> I really do appreciate it. This will be KRG's Chief Meteorologist Ed Bloodsworth from Mobile, Alabama. And that's it for us. We've talked about a lot today and we'll have a lot more as well. So thank you for joining us for tonight's special edition of Tracking the Tropics. We'll have another special edition right here tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern Time. CBS 17 Chief Meteorologist Wes Hohenstein will anchor that. We appreciate you spending part of your Sunday night with us live in Raleigh, North Carolina. I'm Brian Hutton Jr. Have a great rest of your evening and stay safe.